Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use Power Platform's pre-built AI models. And this is a continuation of my Power Platform AI model series, video number five. I also highly recommend you go watch the other four ones. All right, so in this video, I'm going to specifically focus on the pre-built AI models because that's a good way to go ahead and start in and some of these might already match some of your scenarios. And just to give you some variety, I'll go and take two of these pre-built models. One of them I'll apply it in Power Apps and the other one I'll apply it in Power Automate. And I'll even throw in some Microsoft Teams just to give you some variety. So stick around because this is going to be awesome and very, very useful. But first, here's my intro video. So in this video, we are going to focus on AI models, specifically the pre-built models that are already available out of the box. And we'll even go ahead and leverage them just to customize that both in our Power Apps and in our Power Automate side. So let's get started. One of the things you need to keep in mind is that you need to have this functionality of AI models or builder enabled at your environment level. So let me quickly show you that. In my Power Platform Admin Center, also known as PPAC, you specifically go to your environment. In my case, it is AI Builder Stuff. So once I click on it, on the top, you go to Settings, and right away here, under Products, go ahead and click on Features. And inside Features, you see all of these Copilot functionalities. And the ones that we specifically need are all of these AI Builder and AI Prompts. Now, AI Prompts is something that I did in the previous videos. For the sake of this one, we need to make sure that AI Builder is turned on. Because once it's turned on, you will have the functionality to use all the AI model types, including those which are in preview. All right, so in order to go and see these AI models, you can go either to your Power Automate or to your Power Apps. So for the Power Automate one, once I'm in here, on the left, you can go and see AI models. And if you don't see that, that's fine. Go and click on More, and you'll be able to see it right over here, or you can even go and click on Discover All. The same thing is there for Power Apps as well. If you don't see it over here, click on More, and you can go and find it. And it's exactly the same view on both sides. So in my Power Automate side, if I go and click on AI models, you see all of these models over here. And the same thing, see in my Power Apps, I see all the models. In fact, the look and the feel is almost the exact same, except that the color changes. So back in my Power Automate, I can see them in different categories. I can see them in most popular, documents, text, structured data, images, and if you wanna see all of it as a quick snapshot, simply click on all and they just show up over here. The exact same thing is for Power App side as well. You can go into all of these different models or you can go and click on all. Same look and feel. Now, if you watched my AI prompts video, what you know is over there we had to go and use credits. Well, that's not the scenario over here for the AI models which are pre-built because everything is already available. However, there are two requirements. One of them is that this environment where you're using, it needs to have Dataverse enabled and you have to have these premium licenses, which means it cannot be the Microsoft 365 license for Power Apps and Power Automate. You need to have the premium or per user license for Power Apps if you're building Power Apps like a Canvas app, or if it's gonna be a Power Automate Cloudflow type scenario. So hopefully you understand that, that there is a difference between these models and prompts, both from the credit consumption side and from the licensing side. All right, so let's focus our attention on the Power Automate Cloud. And over here, I'm gonna go on text and we are gonna utilize this one, which is detect positive, negative, or neutral sentiment in text data. And here's my scenario. I have a shared mailbox where I constantly keep getting emails from customers. And one of the things I want is to do a quick sentiment analysis of the body of these emails coming in and just to make sure, hey, is this a positive, is this a negative or a neutral type of an email? And either way, go ahead and take that information and put it into my Microsoft Teams so that my overall team can get a quick overview of these emails coming in. And we're gonna do all of that specifically using this AI model, which is already pre-built. So let's go and click on it to take a look. Once I go and click on it, the secondary window opens up over here and you can do some testing immediately, even based on your input language. So by default, it is English, but if I click on the drop down, these are all the languages that I have available. 
in addition, you can go and do some testing over here. So it already went and added this text, which is it wasn't easy to sign up for an online bill payment. And the sentiment for that is positive. Confidence score of that is 100%. You can go and get more variety of these test text by simply clicking on this random sample. So if I go and click over here, that's another one that I got. And if I want to go and analyze it, simply click on that. It gets analyzed. And over here on the right, it's saying, hey, this one is of a type negative. And it's 100% confident that this is negative. So I like how this is all done over here. Gives us a good way to get an overview of how this works. But we want to use this model specifically for a power automate cloud flow. And to do that, you come to the bottom right over here where it says use pre-built model. Click on the drop down and it gives you two options. Use in a flow or use in an app. For our scenario, we're going to use it in a cloud flow. So I'm going to go and click on that. It opens up another tab and it directly takes me to all these templates which are already filled showing me the three templates already available that uses AI Builder. And the one that I want is very similar to the right which is right over here. Send a notification with the sentiment of manager's email using AI Builder. However, this is a little different from what I want. Again, it's close enough but it's a little different from what I want. So what I usually do is at least I'm going to go click on it. Let's go in. Let's take a look at how different it is and then we'll go and tweak it. So good, all my connections are done. I'll go and click on continue just so that we have an idea of what this is looking like. And to make it easy for this one, I'm gonna go and toggle off the new designer. Sure, I'll go in and switch without saving it just so I can see the logic of this. Okay, cool, the flow gets triggered when a new email is coming in. It goes and gets your profile so that you can go and get your manager, uh, verifies everything. This is an important one, see? Because it takes that text and it's going in and making from an HTML to a text. So that's something that we will need. After that, this pure text is sent in to use from the AI model, and then a push notification is sent out. So overall, I like everything I see over here. However, we are going to go and tweak it a little bit. So let me show you what the completed model is, all right? Because I actually took this and I tweaked it. So I'll let me show you what the finished one is. I'm gonna go outside over here and right over here, this is the one. So when I go in, the first thing I did is I changed my trigger. In my case, the trigger is when new email arrives in a shared mailbox. And obviously you gotta make sure that you have access to that shared mailbox. It is something that is done on the exchange side so you can talk to your exchange admins. Just make sure that you have access to this mailbox. Um, so that's my incoming shared mailbox. And then I've just gone and make sure that the folder is only inbox. Nothing else has been added over here in the advanced options, but you can go and change it where if it's, you know, if it's specifically coming from a user or do you want to look at attachments or you want to ignore them? Like stuff like that, you can change it over here, all right? Now, this HTML to text, well, that's the one that we got from that example. So I exactly put it over here. And this body of that email, that's the one that I put in as content. After that, I'm going to go ahead and analyze it for the, to get the sentiment. So this HTML, that's what's added in, in the text property. And I've taken the language as English. And finally, I'm going to go and post it in a team I'm already part of. So I'm letting the flow bot be the one who's posting it. So post as is flow bot, post in, well, that's going to be in a very specific channel. Here's my team, here's the channel. And then I went out and added some of this text. I'm just saying a new email has arrived. What is the subject of that email? Give me a body preview because there actually is an attribute called body preview and then the overall sentiment over here. So everything looks good. I'm gonna go and click on save just to make sure all of this, I'm gonna go and click on save just to make sure. And now let me go and test it. So the email is this one right over here. That is the shared mailbox that I've got. So I'm gonna pretend like this email is coming from somewhere from outside. So here's just somebody randomly from outside sending this email. That's the email address to which it is coming. Here is my subject. It is inquiring about some summer workshops. And here's the body. It says, hello, my name is Justin, and I'd like to learn more about Power Platform AI Builder. Do you have any workshops coming up this summer? That is the email that is coming in. So let me just go and click on send, all right? So that's gonna be our incoming email, which means now if the flow is working just as we planned, we should be able to go ahead and actually extract all the text, do a sentiment analysis, and then post it in our teams. So here you go. I'm just gonna go outside over here just to keep an eye on this email. So the last email which I received was about three hours ago. So we're here, I'm just gonna go and do a refresh just to make sure the latest email comes in. Since that mailbox is shared with me, I can go directly to my contact us in my inbox and I can wait for it. So there you go, that email actually came through. So I'll just go back to my flow over here. 
So I'll just go back to my flow over here. There you go. That one ran 33 seconds ago, which means now if I go into my Microsoft Teams, there you go. That's the one that came in. It says, hello, my name is Justin, and I'd like to learn more about Power Platform AI Builder. And it's also telling me hey, the overall sentiment is positive. So this is how we were able to go ahead and use AI Builder specifically for that model and use it from the Power Automate side. It's very easy, very successful using one of the pre-built models. So now let's switch gears and take a look at this from the Power App side. So my scenario in Power Apps is actually to go ahead and extract information from receipts. Because as I am traveling, I want it easy to go ahead and take a picture of the receipt, specifically extract that information, and then even save it somewhere however I want. And to do that, I'm going to go and click on the Documents group. And right over here, there is a pre-built model called Extract Information from Receipts. So as I go and click on it, another pop-up window comes up. There are actually already some demo ones that you can use, or you can even go and upload one of yours for testing. So I'll just click on it. And for example, this is the one that I have. I'm gonna go and select it, click on open. It automatically uploads this receipt for a lunch I had at Chick-fil-A. It was going ahead and analyzing it. And then once the analysis is complete, on the right, it tells me all this information. Plus it is even highlighting all the places from which this information is coming from. Because it is small, I can even go ahead and zoom into it and get a good look at it. This is pretty neat. This type of model was available out of the box and it exactly matches my scenario. So what I'm gonna do is from here, go ahead and build a Canvas app. Now, similar to Power Automate, there is already a template available for Power Apps. And to do that, you simply come on the bottom right where the button is, click on the drop down arrow and select this option, use in an app. Now, as I click on it, another tab opens up. So we just have to wait for that. First message that comes up is, hey, this is a premium component, so just make sure that you've got the correct AI builder license. Okay, I've got all that good. Click on it, and voila, now it goes ahead and actually opens up a Canvas app and presents me with this information. All it basically did was actually just create a screen and then go ahead and add that control. So what I did was I actually took that to the next level. I actually built my own Canvas app. So let me show you that one, all right? So I'll just go and close this tab up. Yeah, I don't need it. Um, go to my app. And this is the one, the receipt processing. Let me click on the pencil to go and edit it. And I'm at least show you the overall idea so that you can go and replicate it on your side. Uh, yes, I did go ahead and use the responsive design. So as you can see, I have actually used a responsive design. I put everything in one screen and over here, it has got the screen container and then it's got the header and the bottom container. So some of you may have already guessed it which screen template I've used. For your curiosity, let me show it to you. It's right over here, the plus new screen. This is the one that I used over here because that way I have the header on the left is where I can actually put the receipt processor control and on the right, I can go and see all this information. So for your curiosity, this is the screen type that I used. All right, so in the header one, it's got very simple text, all right? It's just got a label and it's got an icon on the right in case I wanna go and save it for some other place. On the bottom, this is the bottom, I've actually got some sub containers. So on the sidebar, which is right over here, this is the place where I went in and added the receipt processor. And to do that, it's really simple. On the top where it is the insert, click on the drop down, go down over here in the AI builder. This is where you will find all of these models that you have. For ours, we are actually using the receipt processor. And because it's got a diamond, it's actually saying that, hey, this is a premium license, which is also why we got that pop-up message over here. That's why I told you that this will require a premium license. So I basically went and took that, and when I added it, I put it right over here. Now I did modify some of the properties on the right, so let me show you that as well. The flexible height, I went and turned that on, and the alignment is the one I used on the right over here. I right? stretched it up, and that's what filled it nicely. Now on the right side, that is where I also did some magic. I went in and added some labels, but then I put in a container. So there's two labels on the top. There is the merchant name and the merchant address, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then here in the container, I've actually gone in and added a gallery. In the gallery, I've got a few things. I've basically got the price, I've got the quantity, and then I've also got the item. Now, these names that you saw, name, quantity, price, these are automatically coming in directly from the receipt processor. So let me show you that for as an example, all right? On the top where the merchant name is, this is how I went and added my power effects. 
Now, this receipt processor, that's the one which is right over here. See the receipt processor, that control that I added? So let me just show you this, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off, and I'll go ahead and add my period again, and all of these other attributes or properties that you're seeing in, this is coming in directly from that AI builder model that we have, the pre-configured one, the receipt processor. So it goes ahead and gets you a merchant address, the merchant name, merchant phone number, tax, tip, everything, all in all, it just already shows up over here. Pretty neat from this standpoint. What I also like is how you're going ahead and doing it. So for example, in our gallery, all right, the one on the left over here, well, that is the, uh, this item type name because I'm going and getting names for each and every item in the bill. And it'll make sense to you in just a minute. So this is the name over here. This is the quantity and over here is the total price. Now, this total price that you see over here is the line by line item. On the bottom, I've also gone and added a total. This total is the overall price. So just to clear the confusion that I might have over here, let's do a test. I'm gonna go and click on play here, I'm gonna go and scan a receipt. So this lunch one that I showed you in the model as a demo, I'm gonna show you the exact same one over here. I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna click on open, and it is processing this receipt. This is the exact same receipt that I used when I went to the Chick-fil-A for the demo. But check this out, on the right now, over here, I'm telling who the merchant name is, which is the store, Chick-fil-A. The merchant address, well, in this case, that's all it went and picked up. But over here, I'm getting the line by line item. But I went and added this one meal. The cost of that meal was $9.65. I went and bought one lemonade as well. Well, that's a lemonade, one, and that's the price. And this is the total price. So that's why you see that this total over here, it says the total price, that's for the line by line item. And this is how you add it. Why? Because in the gallery, I've used receipt processor dot purchased items. And when you do that, you get these line by line items. But this bottom over here is the receipt processor dot total because that is the overall price. That's the one that you see at the bottom over here. So it's starting to make sense how it works because this is how I did it in a Canvas app. Because again, the original one that was there out of the box, I didn't like it a whole lot. I'm talking about this one over here. This one, I don't like it a whole lot. So I went and created my own custom Canvas app and a lot of it was already part of the screen template design. I just went and tweaked it to match my need. So this is how it works on the Power App side. So just to reiterate, in this case, we use the pre-built models, both for Power Apps and for Power Automate. Therefore, there was no credit consumption. The only requirement was in the environment, Dataverse needs to be turned on and you need to have the premium license. However, in the next video, we are going to create custom models. And over there, things change a little bit. So make sure you watch that video as well. But Hopefully this one was useful to you because I showed you there are so many of these pre-built models available and all you may have to do is tweak how your apps and flow works, but the model is already ready out of the box. So go ahead, start using it. And as always, keep using AI models. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? Because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.